Hello everyone, this is Michelle Nadine Baker back with Patient Power and I'm here on my very last day of infusion treatment at Dana-Farber and I'm here with Jeffrey Hellman, otherwise known as Jeff. He's Hello. my, he's a big part of my team here to bring me to a cure and he's my physician's assistant and I have quite a few questions for Jeff today that I'm sure a lot of you would love to know the answers to. Uh, so, Jeff, I really just wanted to find out from you about clinical trials in general. How do people get involved in a clinical trial? So the main way is to go to a, a research center. We're here at Dana-Farber, for instance, but there, most big cities uh, or, or moderately sized cities have uh, uh, clinical trial centers. And there are some even community uh, air, uh, places that do them as well, uh, some local oncology and offices that aren't you know, necessarily a huge or affiliated with the center uh, do do some trials. So, but the main thing is to probably come to a, you know, a major cancer center. And um, thank you, Jeff, for that. I know that there's a lot of people out there wondering um, about particular trials for CLL. That's what I have. So could you explain um, in your own medical terminology about the trial that I'm on and what would make, what makes someone like myself a good candidate for this type of trial? Okay, sure. So uh, the trial you're on, as you know, but they don't maybe, uh, is, is uh, com combining chemotherapy with a new what we call small molecule uh, uh, therapeutic, uh, imbrutinib or imbruvica, and the chemotherapy is FCR or uh, fludarapine, cytoxin, and rituxin. Rituxin is not technically chemo, but we sort of lump it together with that. So uh, and basically the, the imbrutinib or imbruvica is used in combination with FCR, uh, for six months, getting the chemotherapy over three days for, for once every six months, and uh, getting daily in Bruvica, and then continuing on afterwards on the maintenance of Bruvica. And how long do people generally stay on the Bruvica, or is that something that's not known yet? Uh, it's something that's not known yet. Right now, we have people on it sort of indefinitely. Uh, you know, so, so the plan would be that uh, the FCR would get you into remission and that the brutinib would keep you there indefinitely. So, I mean, then at one point, not necessarily on this trial, but there may, may we may look into stopping the brutinib and see what happens, or Bruvica and see what happens, but right now that's not sort of uh, how things are thought about as of now. So. Mm -hmm. And um, so what made me a good candidate um, for this particular trial? I know there's all sorts of trials, or all sorts of therapies. Mm -hmm. um, how come... Um, for one thing, the timing, because people in Watch and Wait, you know, it's always the question, when is it the time? And also, uh, which treatment out there is best for me? Is, is it very specific for each person out there? Which one is right for them? So I, I guess we have to talk about what the standard of care is first. So uh, traditionally, the standard of care for someone under 65 years old, which you are. Uh, it's nice to be young somewhere. <laughs> uh, we would do this FCR chemotherapy by itself. So that's sort of the standard of care for CLL. Now, as we get, as people get older with CLL, and they need treatment either, either a upfront treatment or subsequent treatment if their CLL returns uh, after their first treatment. Uh, we, we would consider something milder, such as bendamustine rituxin, which is chemotherapy, or we would do. Uh, at this point, we would do something a second line like a brutinib, bruvica, adelalisib, some of the other small molecule pills that we are using now. Uh, just because as you get older, as you can imagine, chemotherapy is a little more toxic on the body and there are more side effects and issues. So, so what made you a good candidate for the FCR by, just by itself is that you're un under 65 and healthy. I mean, there are even people that are under 65 who, are, who have other uh, medical issues that we would do, we would not do FCR, and we would just do BR because they're less chance of toxicity. Mm -hmm. So so that's first. And then, you know, combining with the Imbruvica uh, is, you know, basically we, we have sort of a new way of thinking for young people uh, that we want to get them, you know, in a remission uh, indefinitely, which, you know, we'll kind of talk, talk about the cure word later, but, uh, you know, in, at least for now, we'd say in, in indefinite remission. So we're thinking of the FCR uh, and the boot, and we'll put people like yourself, hopefully, into a long, very long-term remission. No, is um, one of the hopes with these long-term remissions that by then there could be something that's more curative and more definitively curative? Yes, definitely, definitely. And it, it may or may not involve either chemo or these small molecules cures, or some of the other new things that, that we're researching, like CAR-T therapy, uh, 
and whatnot. So there's definitely there's definitely hope out there for for, for that. Um, so this get, this gets a little kind of personal for me, which is fine. And um, for those of you who've been following um, on patient power, uh, so how am I doing on this trial? So I'm, as I've stated, this is my last day of infusion, month six. Um, I was I last had bat the large battery of tests after halfway through, which was mm -hmm. after three months, which was now, you know, a few months ago. Uh, how am I doing on this trial? With and I have some um, I have some challenging prognostic indicators I know compared to mm -hmm. to others. So how how am I faring on the uh, trial? Very well. So so people that get chemotherapy for this FCR for six months, we don't always check in the middle. That's something we do for the trial just to see how things are going. So for you, that's what we did as you're on a trial, and uh, it showed that your, your CAT scan had improved, definitely. Uh, so one of the, the components we look at in a CAT scan, lymph nodes and spleen are the main ones uh, that can be enlarged essentially from the CLL. So that was, you know, your lymph nodes are much improved and your spleen was just barely above normal. So so that's excellent. We're heading, heading in the right direction. So we, pre, we we hope and predict that you will have no evidence after six months, uh, or I guess technically it's eight months because we wait two months to restage. Re uh, so that's the first thing we checked midway through. And second thing was your bone marrow biopsy. So. Uh, you basically had very minimal disease left on your bone biopsy. biopsy. There still was some. Uh, some people after three months of FCR are in a complete remission, but that's not a probably high percentage or the majority, I would say. So you still, you know, we're, we're close to that. And it came down quite a bit. It came down quite a bit. Yeah. I believe 90 to 91% uh, right. CLL infiltrated, right? Right, which is a very common, most people are above 90% when they start chemotherapy because that's, you know, when they're, Basically, when the bone marrow gets filled up with uh, CLL, that's uh, eventually you're not able to make your red cells and your, your platelets, and, uh, and usually it's the 90 plus mark where that starts to happen. So the bone marrow is very resourceful until you get above 90 percent or so, and then the counts start to go down, indicating need for treatment. Mm -hmm. so. And as far as um, the MRD testing, now that shows um, a few different values as well, right? When measured. So, so MRD uh, testing, which stands for minimal residual disease, uh, is something that we do here. We don't, they don't do it in a lot of other uh, sort of non-research centers, uh, or even sometimes we don't do it even if someone's not on a trial here. Uh, but basically what that shows is that when they look at it at an extremely microscopic level, and it's some scientific test that I don't know all the details about, but you know, that's, that's, <laughs> that's okay. But basically they, they, they have specialized testing to really look at a very microscopic level to see if they're just one or two cells in a, in a, in a sample that, that uh, are consistent with CLL. And uh, so for, for instance, your bone marrow, because it showed some uh, disease just on our regular testing for it, I mean, it was uh, your MRD testing came back positive, which, you know, hopefully, you know, in the end it will be negative, uh, which we'll, you know, we'll see. Thank you. And um, I have to tell everyone that Jeff and the team have been very open to all my questions. I've always been so curious. It's one of the reasons I went... Uh, I went into journalism because I've always asked a million questions, but Jeff has been a wonderful, wonderful partner to answer uh, all the myriad of questions, which mm -hmm. I weren't too many no, for you. Never, no. And it's been a great uh, patient um, medical team relationship here, and I, I hope that all of you can find the same out there. But if you had any words of people like clinical trial or no clinical trial, what would your advice be to them? So I, I think that I would definitely consider or look into it. Uh, especially for CLL. I mean, there's so many uh, great new treatments out there that are coming out, um, and, and you have the opportunity to get them before they're released to the market, which, uh, you know, is, is a benefit to you, obviously. And, and you know, a lot of people will, will say, well, I don't want to be a quote-unquote guinea pig, um, but it's, it's we don't really think of it like that. It'd be, people on these new trials do, do as well or better than the standard of care, generally speaking. Uh, so it's something that people should look into, and the and the other thing is is that once you've gotten treated with the standard of care, you may, you may have disqualified yourself from being on a clinical trial. So so therefore, you know, it, it makes sense that if you you know want to look into that option, you should do it first. Um, I think some people are under the misconception if they go on a clinical trial, they could be given a placebo and therefore not be getting better. Um, 
is, does that happen in this type of clinical trial? Not, this... not here. I'm sure there's some out there still, but, but basically the, the so three phases of studies that we that we do, and uh, to go through them briefly, this phase one, which is a safety study, which means we'll definitely get the drug. 100% of people get the drug, um, and, and and you know basically they escalate the, the dose and see well, what's a safe dose. It's already been tested in animals and and, and generally other people as well, uh, so it's, it's it's still safe. It just means that you definitely get the dose, and it may change the dosing may change over time for you. Uh, and then this phase two is, is an efficacy study just to see whether or not it works. Now that we have the safe dose, it does this show activity in CLL, for example. So therefore you definitely get the drug, obviously. So then you go to the phase three, which is called the randomized, tri randomized trial trials, which traditionally in the past, you know, would use a placebo but generally, what we do now uh, for randomized trials, we do standard of care versus the experimental. So right now, you're on a, I believe it's phase, phase two here for you, and uh, so the phase three would be uh, comparing FCR and abutinib versus FCR and not abutinib, and then you know, depending on how patients do on e each arm, uh, they could say, well, abutinib with this combination is is clearly better, which is probably what they will eventually find if they do that study. Uh, so so basically, you know. The chances are you will get some sort of treatment, no matter what study. Some some sort of treatment. You won't get a placebo uh, for the most part. Well, thank you. You're Do you welcome. have any other words of encouragement for people out there and no. who have CLL? Because you've been very uh, helpful. Well, I, I you know it's it's it, you know it's technically a cancer, you know, but we have so it, it, it's it's. And for many people, not a very aggressive cancer. It can have some bad markers, which confer a more aggressive nature. But even patients like that, now with the new drugs, uh, we have some highly effective treatments for them. And you know, hope that basically people will uh, either be in a, a, a long-term remission or maybe one day cure. So, yeah. That's the best news that we can have. <laughs> yes. Exactly. Thank you so much, Jeff, right. for right, joining no us on Patient Power. Oh, no problem. Here we are, live from Dana Farber Cancer Institute. Thank you. Take care.